Call to order the City Council Work Session for City of East Grand Forks, Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. With City Clerk, please call roll. Mayor C. Gander, Council President Mark Olstead. Here. Council Vice President Tim Raypel. Here. Council Members Clarence Vetter. Here. Ben Pukshavinsky. Here. Dale Helms. Here. Brian Larson. Here. Karen Peterson. Here. Does term court. Number one, review of bid results and funding for the 2022 City Project Number 3, Quiet Zone, Street and Sidewalk Improvements. Good evening, Mr. President, uh, Council. Um, as you recall, at the February 7th meeting, um, we had discussion about the Quiet Zone project, um, having received bids for that project. Um, again, we'd received two bids, with the low bid being from Zavril, RJ Zavril and Sons. Um, again, the bids came in about 29% above our anticipated estimate um, so we did at that time you know wanted some additional time to be able to go back um, have some just further discussion with BNSF about the bid results and then also wanted to um, visit with Sacred Heart um, you know meeting with both entities just to see about um, you know assistance with further funding from those two parties so so Reed and I did have a teams meeting with uh, BNSF um, they came back said that they were um, they would not provide any additional funding beyond the hundred and fifty six thousand two hundred three that they were already providing um, as an incentive for the closure of Third Street Northwest However, they did reach out to MnDOT. Um, MnDOT did say that they would uh, provide an additional 50,000 um, as an incentive to closing of Third Street Northwest. And that's in addition to basically the 58,000 MnDOT's already picking up for half of the cost of revising the signal systems at 2nd and Business Highway 2. And then as we've discussed, MnDOT's also picking up um, the entire cost to upgrade the railroad signal system and gates at Central. So MnDOT's, I think, really kind of ponied up and helped us out here. Um, Reed did have a discussion with Sacred Heart um, back on February 16th. Um, they need to get together with their kind of their financial group, which they um, are meeting tomorrow. So we're hoping, you know, maybe tomorrow, Thursday time frame, we should find out, um, you know, if they're willing to participate. Um, so we're hoping, you know, before next week's council meeting, you know, we'll know what that is and then be able to provide, um, you know, a recommendation moving forward. So. So really, um, you know, I guess the one thing that BNSF did agree to, I forgot about that, is um, anytime there's any work on this project within 25 feet of the tracks, um, the contractor is required to have a flagger from BNSF on site. And based on the initial estimates we would got from BNSF, it was like $1,200 to $1,500 a day to have them on site. And BNSF did agree um, that they would pay for, or they would cover the cost of any flagging operation. So we had put in the specs about an allowance of about $35,000 for the flagger. And then anything above that was going to kind of be the contractor's responsibility. So if you look at the estimated total project cost, I did have flagging operations in there at 35,000. So that cost, I guess, would come off. So, so we did get a little bit of a, a bone from BNSF, I guess. So. <laughs> Not a lot, but it all helps, right? So, so I guess that's kind of an overview. I don't know if you guys have any questions, additional questions Mr. for us. Larson. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Emery. You mentioned that the low bidder was R.J. Zavrol, but it it is op construction, I, correct? Sorry. Yes, you are right. Okay, just R.J. Zavrol is Lafayette Park. <laughs> just to confirm yeah, that. No, you're, you're for right. The it's op construction. Sorry about that. Yeah, and then um, I've spent some time in the area. I was in I was at Sacred Heart for a basketball tournament and for the fish fry over the weekend, and then kind of understanding the the plans. And um, I think this is a a good project. Um, I wasn't on the council when the 
the concept for this project came came forward so I've been trying to get up to speed a little bit and um, with the, the pedestrian improvements the safety improvements with removing one of those at grade crossings and then the removal of the very loud uh, train horn from the school church and the homes in the area I think it's really a win for the center of our town so um, I think it's a good project we should move forward with I know one of the concerns with uh from Sacred Heart when Rita met with them was was the closure of third because they they have a lot of people that park kind of on the south side of the track and then utilize the uh, the parking lot of the uh, park facility over there so one thing we have been reviewing is um, on third street on second street just looking at the potential even to do some diagonal parking over there you know maybe in combination with even some of the parallel parking they got but again I think 3rd Street, 2nd Street, you know, they are wide enough so we may be able to accommodate some diagonal parking which is going to probably increase the capacity of their parking stalls, probably almost double of them, double of them, double them. So, and then the other thing we looked at is kind of between the tracks and 2nd Street there, there's kind of that big green area there. Um, we can't have any parking within BNSF right away there, but um, looking at what still would be available, we could probably get roughly 12 to 13 stalls in there. So again, just trying to get more parking, I get think closer to their, kind of their main doors, so. Thank you, Mr. President, and, and Steve, you did a good job summarizing of the discussion with Sigurdar. I think maybe just one more thing to note on that. The parking was a concern with they lose the parking on the south side of the tracks because of the fencing that's going to go into the quiet zone. The other thing they asked us to look at, uh, and we've had one conversation with staff, we would, we would want to follow up with Sacred Heart, is they asked whether we'd consider the road that goes right along the east side of the school from basically Central <laughs> Avenue to 3rd Street, if there's any potential that that street could, be, could become a one-way rather than a two-way traffic street. Um, it's, a city, it's a local street under our jurisdiction, so it, we certainly could if we want to do that. Um, that needs some more review though and I, I hopefully even this week I'll be able to have a follow-up meeting with Sacred Heart to ask them a few more questions for consideration um, impacts of safety around the school and how traffic is going to move around the school if that becomes a one-way that's something they'll have to be really keenly involved in uh, but just so it's on your radar that that may be something that comes back even after this quiet zone project would be approved that that might be something that they're requesting that we consider um, I don't have the, I don't know if it's even got a street number. It's, the the, the and yeah, that runs right along the playground, tight right along the playground and the tracks. Yeah. yeah. Where they line up with the fish fry. So they would want the one way to start from the, what I would call the front of the school on 4th Street on the central side and then f track towards the, the back of the school on 3rd Street. So no, no action at this time on that. I just want to put that on your radar. That may be a, a future request that comes from this. Sure. Thank you, sir. Anybody else have any questions? I see none, Steve. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <coughs> we'll move on to number two, consider approving the joint powers agreement with the Department of Natural Resources. Mr. King. Thank you, Council President, City Council. <coughs> um, the joint powers agreement between the city and the Minnesota DNR has expired. The Joint Powers Agreement has jurisdiction over the campground. Uh, the DNR has proposed a new agreement, a four-year agreement. Um, the one thing that changed since when I sent out the packet was on page six. There, page six, there's a um, the bottom line there says total obligation of the state under this agreement will not exceed seven hundred and fifty thousand. That will be now at one point um one million two hundred and fifty thousand because it is a longer agreement um in 2023 the campground had uh, eleven thousand three hundred reservations that's only three hundred three hundred and eighty eight off the record set in 2018. one other thing to note that uh this current this is uh the 20-year milestone for the opening of the campground recommendation would be to approve the agreement with the DNR and um, move forward with our partnership. Do you have any questions for Mr. King? Thanks. 
move on to number three, discussion regarding deer population. Admin and Perth office. Um, I'll start with this, and at any time, if I forget something, please, Jeremy, read, um, chime in. Over the years, um, as Council well knows, we had conversation about this a few years back. Um, about the population of deer within the city limits, how it kind of ebbs and flows throughout the year. Um, we've gotten lots of complaints from residents how new landscaping, new trees get eaten, um, and a big thing is the accidents. Um, people, you know, get in car accidents, fender benders, and it's nowadays not very cheap to um, repair your vehicle. Last fall, I got a call from a gentleman. He had almost hit a deer a couple times in the year and then ended up getting into an accident, so he asked what we could do. Um, previous discussions had brought up how there was a restriction of 100 yards, even for a bull hunt, um, within the Greenway. Um, I followed up. I, I just told him, I said, I'll follow up with the DNR, see if anything has changed since the last time we talked about this, because I didn't know, don't always keep up to date with the state statutes or how things change. Um, so I reached out to Emily Hutchins. Um, she's based out of the Erskine area with Wildlife Division. And in the conversations and emails that I've had with her, she was not sure where that 100-yard restriction came in. It's not in state statute. Um, after review of city ordinance, we only see it in um, where it talks about um, the shooting off of firearms. So um, with that no longer being a restriction, before we got too far into anything, um, staff is going to bring this forward and ask again if the city council would be interested in having staff put together information to do a special hunt in the Greenway areas. Um, at this time, um, where it would be, obviously, you know, we don't know. One place we would want to avoid is the campground area. Um, the campground is under the Parks and Trails system, and I was talking to the Wildlife Division, so they are two separate things. Um, so we would obviously avoid the campground space. Um, in our management plan that we had put together, we've already done some of these things. We've already done a prohibition of feeding deer, um, you know, ask people to put their bird feeders up higher, stuff like that. Um, I guess I don't know how much we've done with education about what kind of plants to put in or landscaping to put in to help avoid the deer eating that. Um, but uh, a lot of this, it, one thing we would want to amend the city ordinance, I did include under the dangerous weapons portion, um, and it's pretty short under the um, use of bow and arrow, um, but one thing, talking at a staff level, if this is something we want to consider, another thing we also might want to consider, it had been brought up that we might want to put in an archery range. Um, for our residents to be able to utilize. So um, that might be something we also want to look at while reviewing this, if this is something that the council would like to move forward with. So if I'm missing anything, or I'll take questions, or... Um, the only thing I would add is we haven't received the complaints in the Parks and Rec Department. We have received requests, people asking if that's something that they could do. Um, obviously that this time it's always been no and then with my previous hat in the public works talking with staff down there and with my other experience i would say that would, we roughly pick up anywhere from four to eight um, deer that have been hit by cars through the probably biglin reinhardt river road uh, corridor so just food for thought there as well i see in our ordinance Plants, Talks about supervised class or events specially authorized by the chief of police. Asked to have a special event for that. We've discussed it before. I've never personally been asked, but we have discussed it as a staff. And I personally don't have any issue with having a hunt in town. Um, I probably would be in favor of it. There, we'd need to do some some study and probably talk to other communities that have had similar hunts. Um, on the numbers front, I did ask our staff to check. This just came up yesterday to, to, to my my being aware of it, so we haven't really had a chance to do a deep dive, but in our calls for services in 2023, uh, we have 13 deer-related calls. Five of those look like they're crashes. It's possible uh, there were additional crashes that involving a deer that were labeled differently, but there are five for sure in 2023. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. No, no, well, I was just. Right I, was, I didn't. No, no, oh, I just. Um, didn't. Right in front of your bike. Yeah. deer or, yeah. or yeah. something else. Yeah, by deer. Just because I've been back there and. Um, I guess I, I have not personally received and I don't remember my office getting that complaint about the deer running, especially, um, you know, fall time when they're in rut and stuff like that. Um, I personally have not gotten a call about somebody feeling unsafe. Um, I don't know. We did get something not that long ago about somebody, um, talking about coyotes running in the Greenway. Um, and I know Chief had kind of addressed that, and I know they had also reached out to the DNR, and it was also around their same time of their mating season when that took place because they felt that they were aggressive. Um, but no, I have not gotten one about deer. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? I mean, it's something that if we're willing to look at and if DNR is fine with it, I guess I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Mr. Larson. Um, yeah, I would agree with your last comment. Um, Megan, you had, you'd mentioned an, an archery range as well. Mm -hmm. How does that relate to this topic? Is that a, a place for residents to practice um, for a future hunt if it was permitted? Um, possibly, but I believe it was Clarence who had brought up um, different activities that we could do. And since, um, you, you know, if the hunt is something that the chief could just approve as a special event, or if we want to amend our city ordinance so it could be allowed, and right now reading that, it's unless it's, unless it's a school sanctioned activity, you know, if it's something that we put in, we might also want to just. It was just thinking ahead, and if we're going to make an adjustment, maybe we want to do it all at once instead of having to keep coming back to it. That's that's the only reason. Okay, yeah. I appreciate that. I think that's a great idea to look at both of them in parallel and, um, you know, in encouraging a, a healthy outdoor sporting activity in town with safety precautions in place I think makes good sense. Okay. Just I, can, I can help you with that, Brian. We are looking at that through the Parks and Rec uh, Commission. We think we've narrowed down a spot, but we're not re ready to divulge anything at this point because we have to look into what it's going to cost. Uh, we've got some big sponsors that want to help with, with this too, so um, that's something in the future we'll be letting you know. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. All right, number four, discussion and setting legislative priorities for the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities. Legislative Day. Mr. Rutnan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, legislative Action Day with the Coalition is March 20th. Uh, Mayor Gander, Council President Olstead, and myself plan to attend that. Um, we need to start getting some meetings scheduled with legislators uh, and would like to make sure that we are targeting the right legislators to fit the topics that are the top priorities for our community and our city council. So in the RCA, I did lay, lay out uh, a handful of them that are already on our minds and on the list. Um, in past experience, I would say the time we have available to meet with legislators, it's probably best to go with three or four at a max that we really feel are our top priorities. Um, so that we can focus our best efforts on those. So um, with the list that's provided or any others anyone has in mind, just looking for feedback on on what uh, you all feel our top priority should be so that we can get some um, some some shareable information ready in handout form so that we can ha have something to hand to legislators as we meet with them. So open to any questions, comments, feedback anyone may have. You may have any input? I think a lot of them on there are ones that SRO is going to be probably one of the main ones that's going to be on everybody's mind down there right now. I think that's, you know, of course, and the, our people know what our the feelings are, but it doesn't hurt to maybe find out who's on that committee that will be overseeing that. Um, of course, the LGA is always going to be on everybody's mind. So. I mean, all of them are good items. So it's just yeah. You can put together a sheet that has top three that or four that we want, and then we can put some ones on the bottom too that are.
keep in mind too. Yeah, we can certainly do that. Anybody else have any input? Oh, Mr. Larson, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, like you said, a lot of them are like there'll be general support. I think in Greater Minnesota for for a lot of these, but for the the ones focused on East Grand Forks. Um, that you know could use some action this session or the next. I think would be the um, LGA for sure, the bonding request, and then the, the um, infrastructure f for the industrial park. I think those are really good. If we had to condense it and not focus on the more statewide issues, those are three really strong local initiatives. Ben. Thank you. Um, my understanding is that this this session is a non uh, budget session. So does LGA even like factor into this one? I don't know if they have committees going on right now with the LGA still or not. Uh, well, the tax committees are meeting. Yes. Yeah. So it, I would say it's probably not a top, uh, a really hot topic item this year, yeah. um, but. It's always a good one to have on the list that it's important that they continue to to fund LGA. Sure. Yeah. Um, but, but you're right, Ben. It is. It's a. It's more traditionally a bonding year this year and not a budget year. Yeah. LGA is definitely important, but I just look at that one and that one just from a budget standpoint for the state. I don't know if it's something that is going to really get much traction this year. But yeah, obviously, if we're going to hand them anything, LGA should be on there. <laughs> Anybody else? <clears throat> I see none. Move. You're good. Thank you. All right. Number five, discussion on city council and mayor pay rates. Mr. Ria Bell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this kind of came to my attention when we were on the labor negotiations committee and how we've deal with all our unions and stuff. And I started thinking, when's the last time that the council has addressed uh, what our wage wages are. Mr. Hutton and staff went back, checked. They went back at least to 2008, and we know it's probably 10 years beyond that, so we're dealing with a 25, 30 year period. <coughs> Is that 20? Dick was on there. Okay. Well, we've looked at this, and I've seen that uh, some of the others, Reed did talk to few and got some rates of what the others are doing. What I'm proposing is that we increase to uh, council members to $800 a month, council president to 1000 and the mayor to $1,200. Um, we don't get the life insurance, we don't get the medical insurance, we don't get vision, dental, or any of this other stuff that some of these are getting. Personally, I wouldn't care if we got that at all anyhow. Um, I just think it's time to bring it up with uh, we always deal with cost of living adjustments. We deal with increase in, in salary and wages to be conform with others. I think looking at the thing here, we could probably go the route I'm saying and still be comfortable with it. And then I, I'd like to put on there somewhere that we look, re look at it every five years instead of waiting and having to take this big jump. We can look at it and say, no, we're all good. Everything's fine. Or maybe we should jump it by $50. The number of meetings that we attend outside of council for your committees that you're on, um, other special meetings. Um, I think what it comes down to and, and the amount of information that goes before us, I think it's, it's a good thing that we maybe take a little jump at this point in time. Do you have any comments, questions? Or? Mr. Bitter. Thank you, Mr. President. My personal thoughts of this, I, I look at state-level legis legislators, our federal legislators, and it always bothers me that they vote their own raises in. I think something like this should be a vote to the, the citizens. If they feel that we deserve the raise, then so be it. I don't think we should be voting on our own raises. If we want it, let's put it on the ballot, let the citizens vote on it. I'm just going about what, uh, what it says in the... Uh that we can do and can't do. And I understand. With your point, Mr. Vetter, would that be, need a change in the charter then too? Because that's I think that's what the charter states. 
I don't know. I, 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 I would defer to our city attorney and whether it would need a change in the charter or not. Don't know. You know, I know you don't know. <laughs> I mean, I top right right now, you don't know. I'll give you the answer. It's a good question. I'll look it up and mm -hmm. I'll get back. Yeah, thanks. MBL 7, even Mr. Larson. Yes. I would just kind of add, um, of course, naturally, it's it's an awkward thing to vote for a pay raise for yourself, and that's certainly not why anyone is in these roles. Um, I would think it would be interesting to consider um, putting this in place after the next election. I think that that might um, motivate some more folks to, you know, run for offices, and um, and then, you know, we can consider that as well as, as folks are looking for re-election or whatnot mm -hmm. as a way of just kind of setting it up for the for the upcoming council i would feel maybe a little bit better about that one it, you know just inside i guess and i think that's where i was going with it we were thinking january one right reed if we thought uh, what we said let me have 70 input i mean it's something to to consider i mean it's uh as you indicated, that you did the research, and the staff did the research, I guess. How long did you go, did you say, better? 20 years? I think it's minimum 20. 16 to 20. Mr. Hutton? Um, we can put more legwork into finding out when that truly was. I just put pre-2008 for sake of time. Our accounting software was put in place in 2008, so that's as far back as our computer history is. I didn't go any further than that, but we certainly can to get that narrowed down to the exact year that we made the last increase. Sure. Something to look into. Anything else from anybody? I'm seeing none. All right. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Move by Rita Pill. Second. Second by Larson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Meet is adjourned.